Let's talk. Viewers of my channel will know that this is a relatively recent addition to my SCA attire. And for those of you outside the kingdom who aren't aware, this is a um, Iris of Merit. This is our grant level arts and sciences award. And it's a order that you are inducted into. Um, and it, it, from a practical standpoint, the, uh, the Iris represents a pretty... Uh, pretty substantial body of artistic work, um, not just producing arts and sciences, but also teaching and mentoring. Um, I, I have heard it described as the halfway point between entry and peer. I don't know if I necessarily 100% agree with that, but for a conceptual conversation, eh, it's, it's, there are worse ways of, of quantifying uh, where this is in the Anstior and uh, ANS tract. I knew the moment they read this in court that my SCA time was going to get more interesting because this is a whole different, um, this is a whole different game. It's one thing to have, you know, I have three thistles. These are AOA, here we go. These are AOA awards for individual artistic endeavors. Uh, well, arts and sciences endeavors. Um, but, and I was hoping to get another thistle, if I'm being honest, but that's another story. But um, my grant of arms, you know, you can't get multiple grants. You can get multiple awards in the grant spectrum, but only one, only your first one actually carries your grant. My grant comes with my Star of Merit, which is a service award. Um, I've never considered myself on an ANS track. I do arts and sciences through a service lens. So this, I was not expecting this. And it really didn't take too long um, for that expectation to develop into an interesting situation. Let me explain. Um, <clears throat> I recently traveled to the Barony of Bonwick. And I was, I was there to herald in a friend for her elevation as the, or investiture rather, for her, for as the uh, landed baroness of Bonwick. And I'm used to walking up to events and I'm 10 feet from the door. It could be Friday night during setup, honestly. And someone will go, it's a herald. I mean, hi, Ivo. And I'm like, I'm about to get drafted into heraldry, which to be clear is exactly what happened. I was... I was 15 feet from the door to the building on Friday, no garb, and I hear someone go, oh, look, it's a herald. Ah, ah, that tracks. And then um, the next morning, I walked in the door for the actual event to gate in. I am four feet in the door, and someone who I know looks over at me and goes, oh, wait, you're an iris. This is, this is not a good start to a conversation. This is not a good start to a conversation. So it turns out, um, I mean, I knew they were having their ANS competition that day. That was well posted. Um, I actually contemplated entering, but wound up choosing not to. <clears throat> and I've known for a while that Iris's grant ANS holders, um, are oftentimes asked to judge um, when there are not uh, enough laurels at an event. Or sometimes they're just asked to judge, period. Whether or not there are laurels or not, it is the will of the, the ruling authority, whoever it is, that no, we would like, um, you know, we'd also like to give some of our irises a chance to judge. And the moment she said... <laughs> I have a, you're an iris. I was like, oh, today's about to get complicated because um, they needed a judge. They needed another judge. I have, now, I have never judged an ANS competition ever. Honest, if I'm being absolutely honest, I think I've looked at one form in 27 years. It's, I haven't entered, I haven't entered that many ANS competitions. So it's like, uh, you know, um, I looked at her for a minute and I went, um, uh, er, 
Okay. One minute, and I bolted. I went running right past the uh, uh, troll table, or the gate, and I happened to know that one of the people on site was uh, Mistress Tatiana, um, who is a friend of mine from Wiesenthal, and also a friend of Beatrix, which is part of the reason she was there. Uh, and also Beatrix's Laurel, or Foster Laurel to be specific. And I went running up to Beatrix and I filled her in on um, this, the situation. I said, uh, I went up to Tatiana rather and I filled her in on this and I said, uh, I have never laid hands on a blank judging form, let alone ever judged. Do you have any guidance before I go tell this poor soul, yes, I'm willing to go judge? And Tatiana, God bless her, she kind of stood there for a minute and she went, Ivo, uh, would you mind if I shadow judge with you? Now, normally, to be fair, what is supposed to happen is I, as an Irish, should be shadow judging behind a laurel so they are making the decisions and I am learning from their activities before I go in and do it on my own. So to have her offer to shadow judge next to me um, and effectively whisper in my ear. Now, Tatiana and our friends, I know she's she never would have... Uh, even contemplated trying to influence my decisions she wanted to offer neutral guidance and I knew it the moment she said that um, but to have her uh, ask to shadow judge next to me like that um, is placing a lot of faith in my judgment and I, that's for me that's a very serious compliment so I was um, kind of taken aback at that but I, I looked at her and I went yes that would be wonderful so at which point um, I went back to the person who cornered me in the hallway and said, yes, I would be happy to judge. Um, and I uh, filled in some of the details and we set a time and place. <clears throat> My history in competitive arts and sciences is very checkered and very sporadic. Um, my first ever ANS competition was I entered a paper. Um, and I still razz both of my judges on this one. Um, I, it, long story, the, what the paper was, what it was about is not relevant here, but there had been this big push and a big announcement leading up to this, that all of the laurels in Ansteor had had this big retreat and they were calibrating so that they would be more consistent in their scoring. And I want to say it was a 50 point sheet. So two 50 point sheets equals a hundred points. And I got like a... 21 and a 41 <laughs> and for like the next month and i know both of the judges i am good friends with both of them there were no hard feelings i had no illusions about winning anything at this particular competition um but i would occasionally at that event hold up the judging sheets from across the room and go hey how'd that calibration go and oh god um yeah i got some legit death stares <laughs> from those two <laughs> And then I didn't enter for, that was years ago. That was legitimately 12, 13, might even be 15 years ago. Um, and then more recently, I entered a, uh, I entered some of my woodworking at uh, in a competition. And it got a lot of good feedback and the scores were pretty solid. And I entered the exact same display with a little bit more documentation at another event and I was wholeheartedly uh, and I, I will say this without reservation I was wholeheartedly uh, mad at the feedback I got at the second event um, I got questions and comments on my work that told me that a no one read the documentation and B, the people who picked up the sheet should never have agreed to judge woodworking. I know that sounds harsh, but there, the, I understand there is nuance and there are scenarios. This was beyond that. I was looking at that like, no, if you're writing this, you should never have picked up the sheet. Um, and I'm not saying that to bag on those judges. I don't know who they were, and I'm not really, I don't remember who they are. I have the name somewhere written down. Um, but when you get that type of feedback and that type of unhelpful response, um, it's disheartening. 
it, it really does kind of, frankly, it really does kind of uh, uh, sour your interest in, in pursuing arts and sciences competitively. <clears throat> um, and then a couple months later, Bonwick, the same event, uh, Bonwick and Elder Hills, two artisans, two bards, the same event that I won the Bonwick Bardic Champion at, I entered the ANS competition. And on that one, um, very long story, very short, I I kind of cheated because when I showed up, I didn't have a piece. I brought my whole toolkit with me and I scratched, designed, modeled, cast, sanded, and cleaned two matching medallions on site, custom for Eldern Hills and Bondwick. Um and then after, you know, five hours of working on them, six hours of working on them, and I had an audience while I was doing it. As a matter of fact, I made a big production out of the casting. You know, everyone, everyone loves to see molten metal pour, and that's always exciting. Um, and I got a chance to pass around the finished product and all of that. Then I had my documentation already printed out. Even though I didn't know what, I was, what the specific medallion was going to make, all the documentation talked about the process of medallion making in general. So I had a sheet already ready. I walked over, put two medallions down, and put the sheet documentation next to them um, right there on the table. Now, I hold that my artistic and research quality were good and competitive. But I will also freely admit that was... 75% of white people were talking about that six months later was the spectacle of, oh, did you see that? He made his entry on site before the at the event. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. That was, I wanted to show off. I wanted people to have fun. And um, the real reason why I feel so good about that was, was I didn't win. It's not that I wanted to lose. I am very competitive. But when you look at who won the because there were effectively two championships there's one for uh bonwick one for elder hills um when you look at the two people who won i'm here to tell you i have zero problem saying i came in second place to either one of these people they both rocked it it was a, they both did beautiful works excellent documentation i was like you know what coming in third place on this lineup i am 100 percent sold on this this was the right call so that's that is the entirety of my competitive ANS experience. I had a paper that I get to res the judges on because their calibration was almost uh almost 35 points apart. Uh no, 40 points apart. I had one where I got a large S and a lot of thumbs up. Didn't score terribly high, but it wasn't bad. And then the exact same display uh 2 or 3 weeks later, maybe a month later, um was I it's not the score was bad, but the feedback I got was just so lacking that I just kind of threw my hands up there and I'm like, you know what? I'm, and to this day, I still don't enter my woodworking anymore. Uh, woodworking, I do strictly through a service lens. I'm not going to compete with woodworking. That's not why I do it. Um, metal casting is a different story. And then, of course, I had Bonwick, which that's... That was me being a showman. If I'm being absolutely fair, I had an unfair advantage because I got a chance to go, gee whiz, look at this. Um, and that's not what arts and science is about. You, there should not be a presentation fact. I mean, no one else was doing it. So me sitting there with this whole, no, whole uh, eight-foot table, all my metal casting stuff, a big presentation of pouring metal, that's not what ANS is. That is showmanship. That is me being the, you know, the... Uh, the guy with the top hat in the middle of a three-ring circus going, look at this. Um, which everyone did enjoy and everyone had a lot of fun. And all the competitors loved talking with me about the stuff. But that's what I loved about that competition. It entered. It got really good scores. I got excellent feedback. The one thing I need to say about that was the feedback I got was super constructive. It was, here's where your strengths were. Here's where your weaknesses were. Here's what you can do to make it better. Do you have any questions? Here's my name. Here's my card. Here's my number. Oh, my God. That was perfect. Um, but still, if you look at all of those, they're spread out over a long period of time, and it's this just roller coaster of experiences. 
I don't have a competitive culture in me for ANS. So letting me loose in a room with a judging sheet, what am I supposed to do with this? I just got finished complaining about what someone else did to me with one of these things. So we got in there and I got to tell you, Tatiana did the absolute smartest thing I think anyone could have done. Um, for this particular event, what she suggested was she, there were a bunch of us in there. There was another, there was, yeah, there was another Laurel. Um, there were a couple other grants. Their excellencies, their stepping up excellencies of bond work were in there. Um, she suggested that they judge in the round, which is where everyone comment, we all get together with one sheet and we talk about the scores because the sheets were delineated, very clear benchmarks about what the score needed to be based on what was presented. Um, and they, uh, she said, we should do this in the round so that some of our newer judges can understand the logic behind these scores which I didn't say anything at the time, but the back of my mind was screaming, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I know that judging in the round is not practical in all competitions. I know it is not a typical form. I've, I've been part of enough of those conversations with Laurels to know that that is not a common format. But the experience of sitting there and having this discussion. We, we had this discussion with every piece. There were six or seven entries. We were in there for almost three hours. The opportunity to sit there and logic out why we are giving these scores and what questions we had and what feedback we had and understanding why documentation was so important. It's not just to say documentation is important. It is. But seeing firsthand the gaps that it fills in, the questions that it can answer for you that your piece cannot. There were questions I had about some of those entries that no part of that entry itself was going to be able to answer. I needed to know thought processes. I needed to know historiosity of it. I needed to know materials. And the documentation made that possible. And only, for me at least, only being there in the judge's seat, seeing that, really brought to life what it is I need to do if I in another, enter another arts and sciences competition um, because it is such a, it's a difficult task. You are judging different pieces of radically different artistic styles, disciplines, materials. Some of these, some of these art styles did not exist in the same century on the same continent. They're literally half a world apart. And I remember two of the pieces I were looking at, I just remember knowing to myself, the, the arts that these represent are literally on opposite ends of the globe and are almost a thousand years apart. And we are trying to establish an objective score between them to decide which one scores better today. That is insane to contemplate when you think about that. But we did it. We were able to sit down with the scoring sheet we had and objectively rank each of these. Um, thanks partially and in large part to a really well done scoring sheet that I cannot, um, I cannot overstate this. The people who wrote the scoring sheet for the Barony of Bonwick, because they had their own scoring sheet. They were not using a kingdom standard sheet. They made their own. Um, that sheet helped us really narrow down what the scores need to be, because it gave us a ruler that all of the entries could be measured against. But still, for me, there was this jaw-dropping 
eye-opening realization of what the other half, frankly, the other three quarters of an ANS competition looks like. Because all of a sudden I was in the judge's seat and seeing that firsthand, experiencing it, having the discussions. Um, I There were a couple of times where, there were a bunch of times where I would say, well, I think it's a three. And uh, a couple other people very, very directly said, no, that's a two. And we talked about it. No, they're right. It's a two. I had overshot it. But the flip side, even though it was my first time judging, um, there was one piece where everyone was like, ah, this looks like a three. And I said, no, no, this is very clearly a four. And they're like, uh, how do you get to four? And I explained, I, I pointed out and I said, this is design work. Someone apportioned this and had to translate a square design to a rectangular box. This isn't just copy paste. Someone had to translate all of these shapes to this, all of these geometry to a new shape. That's design. That's pencil and paper and rulers and probably a set of calipers to get the proportions right. And I don't know what he did. He, they didn't talk about the tools he used on that particular face. But this is design. This is layout, which is exactly what is called out in a score of four in this category. And they're all like, oh, no, he's right. So a little bit of a little bit of an oh cool moment on my end. I'm, I'm not too proud or I'm not too uh, modest to toot my own horn there. Um, but overall, first of all, the overwhelming majority of, of the time there was all of us talking through and coming to a consensus. There was a lot of explaining. There was a lot of conversation. And the reason I am talking about all this partially because I want you to enjoy the experience, enjoy, enjoy my telling of the experience, because it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience. If you are interested in competing in an arts and sciences competition, whether it's local or regional or even kingdom, and you have not had a chance to actually learn about the judging, um, I wholeheartedly and thoroughly encourage you, wherever you are, whatever opportunities exist, can you sit down and talk with a Laurel um, who's done a lot of judging about, okay, what, you know, let's talk about how you judge. What are, what do these sheets look like? How do you, you know, what are the questions that you have when you, when you do these judging that aren't answered? Um, what type of things do you look for? Um, if you can get a class or a lecture together where you get a couple of laurels or ANS, regular ANS judges together and just have them talk about their experiences um, judging and what they would want competitors to know for future, uh, future competitions. If you want to compete, that will be eye-opening. It will also hopefully demystify and take some of the intimidation out of the competitive process. Because I know my first time entering, I was nervous as I'll get out. It was, I was stupid nervous because it was my first day in this competition, but I was also just stupid because I had no illusions about winning. I knew that paper wasn't going to compete against some of the stuff going in. I knew that going in. But still, I was super nervous about the feedback. Knowing what I know now, all of that anxiety is, is tamped down massively um, because I understand the process. I also understand what I have a right to expect. Um, I now, I now am very comfortable saying that when I get a judging sheet back, there is a honest expectation of, you know, if something's missing, the judges should have called it out. The judges should have said, here's what you need to do to improve. Um, because if they don't, I'm not necessarily going to go and point my finger at him or anything. That's not what this is about. But knowing that that sheet is not a blank paper meant to just skewer you, which is what it feels like the first few times you enter an ANS competition. Um, if you're not getting valuable feedback, usable feedback on those sheets, that's a valid criticism of the judges. And you have a right to go talk to a local Laurel or a local artisan and go, okay, this is what I got. Um, you know, is this, does this look right to you or can you read between the lines and tell me what some good feedback is? Or, you know, maybe you need to look at what I entered and tell me what you think. Those are all valid. Those are all, um, that's part of the relationship between entrant and judge. So 
<laughs> ANS is its own track, guys, for very good reason. Um, I still don't consider myself on the arts and sciences track. I am still very much service-minded. I still have uh, my protege's belt. Um, and I do most of my service through, or I do rather most of my arts through a service lens. But um, I still, uh, I have still been recognized by my kingdom as an artisan, and I still do teach the arts that I practice. Um, so I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that this information shared with you will help you explore arts, whether that's your primary tract or just a side interest, or maybe you want to learn more about to decide if you want to go down that road. I, I don't know. That's that's for you to decide. But I definitely, um, I definitely encourage you, even early on, even if even if you you aren't even entering an arts and science competition, ask around and learn about the judging practices and policies in your kingdom. Um, because uh, God, if I had known then what I know now, um, getting into arts and sciences competitions and entering. Uh, in, in building my documentation and in, in, in preparing for judging, being judged, would have been a whole different process and a whole lot easier process for me. <sighs> Hi, Bella. But until next time, I'll see you at the next event. Goodbye and God bless. If there are two things I've learned that drive uh, videos these days, it's controversy and engagement. Now, I am never going to fly the controversy flag on a regular basis. It's not what I'm here for. It's not the content I want to make, and I really don't think it helps any of us. But let's do engagement. If you like this video, please uh, go down in the comments and leave a comment. Make sure to share the video. And last but not least, easiest of all, make sure to like the video. That helps drive the algorithm. It helps get the video views and helps promote this material. Thank you very much.